Now I'm going to be talking about approximate inference. And one of the ways that we can do approximate inference is a variational inference in graphical models. So there are amazing scholars. So we describe how a wide variety of algorithms, among them the sum product, cluster variational methods, expectation propagation, mean field methods, max product and linear programming relaxation, as well as conic programming relaxation can all be understood in terms of exact or approximate forms of variational representation. So you know for exact inference, there are three simple methods. Either you go for elimination algorithm or you go for message passing such as sum product, max sum and all things, or, or, or you go for junction tree algorithm. For example, if, if you have a loopy graph, you go for junction tree. But, but whenever you have a loopy leaf propagation, your inference is approximate. So there is no guarantee that it converges. And so there are lots of challenges with loopy graphs, graphs that have loops. And you know mean field approximation, you have seen it in probabilistic graphical models from Bayesian networks. Uh, for example, in one of my lectures, exactly two years ago, I explained mean field approximation for, I think it was one of the last lectures of one of my playlists. And uh, we have sampling methods, but we, although I love Markov Chain Monte Carlo, but in this playlist, we focus on variational approaches, variational methods. So in this playlist, we only talk about variational methods in statistical inference. So the general idea is to express a quantity of interest as the solution of an approximation problem. The optimization problem can then be relaxed in various ways, approximating the function to be optimized. Approximating the set or by approximating the set over which the optimization takes place. Such relaxations provide a means of approximating the original quantity of interest. And whenever you see variational methods, it means we are trying to make the problem, we want to, to make an optimization problem, to, to turn it into an optimization problem. And uh, there is a good link we can for, with exponential family because the most promising avenue through our uh, variational methodology tuned to statistics is to build an existing links between variational analysis and exponential family of distribution. And if you want to understand beta approximation, you should uh, you should watch my play my video. I mean part six of the, of this playlist. And uh, so we discussed the connection between the beta approximation and sum product, especially in lecture six. And uh, so we develop connections between beta-like approximation and other algorithms. Uh, because in, in lecture six, I will talk about uh, uh, beta free form, uh, we have Gibbs free energy and we have beta free energy. And uh, I will explain how we approximate the Gibbs free energy. I mean, that is derived from the KL divergence between Q and P, because P is difficult, difficult to obtain in your, for example, graphical model, but Q is a good approximation. And for example, in mean field approach, we multiply QIs and that is kind of approximation. And uh, so if you work on QL in lecture six, I will show you that this becomes like a, a free energy. Let's call it base free 
uh, beta free energy as, as an approximation to Gibbs free energy. Okay, so I will explain it in the in, the, uh, in lecture six. So the computational inference problems, you either want to compute the likelihood or you want to like compute the marginal, this is the marginal, or you want to compute the conditional distributions. For example, you have a set of nodes, you want to condition on that. And for computing a mode of density, you, so this is the problem of argmax. So we'll cover all of them. Taking the perspective of exponential families illuminates some fundamental connection between inference algorithm and theory of convex analysis. You know, in graphical models, uh, we can represent as a family collection of density functions, the exponential family. And A is your cumulant function, which is difficult to obtain, like many other problems in machine learning. The denominator is hard. You know, computing this takes time. So we have some tricks to estimate that. So uh, the, an example of a graphical model that everybody talks about, especially in machine learning, because it's very simple to talk about that, is easing model in uh, statistics, in physics. And for example, so each edge could be selected. And uh, uh, for example, if you work with the, with the nodes, we say that the spin values could be either uh, plus one or minus one. For example, each node could be either plus one or minus one. So you see, it's a, it's a probability space on the configuration space and any anything is possible. So for example, this is one configuration. That this is one, minus one, one, minus one, minus one. And what is the probability of that? You can, so the, this is the total probability. And, or you can focus on one of them. For example, this, what is the probability of this, this node? Uh, and so this is our probability of your configuration. So we call this a unary term, we call this binary term. And, and A is the, goes to the denominator. So I will explain all of these things in the next lecture.